Hello. It is the Salmonetti Report on the line. Hey, hey. Peter Salmonetti, we want to hear about your recent poll that you put on Twitter. Can you tell people about it? Yeah, of course. So um, basically what it is, of course, we have uh, how this news is right now. With really nothing happened, everything moving very, very slow. I want to obviously keep the minds going, keep people talking about certain things, especially when it comes to the Yankees because there's such a want right now for news. But, of course, i got to – got to throw the Machado out to you. I mean, that has been the um, the big thing you have been talking about for a long time. Nobody else really has discussed it. It's become more of news now. But, um, you know, I wanted to just pick the brains of Yankee fans, and Yelich is my personal guy that I that I actually really like but never will happen. I don't see that happening. And, of course, you, Darvish, and the other name I put in there is, of course, Chris Archer. So I just wanted to get some feedback from the Yankee fans on <clears throat> who they would like to see in just a – a dream type of scenario and no question about it Manny Machado blew it out the water exactly he's uh winning with uh, like over 50 percent of the votes and the people that are in close second only have like 25 or 24 percent and it's coming from over 350 Yankee fans that voted so that's a pretty good percentage uh, or consensus from like a voting system because I know what when it comes to politics like, let's say CNN, Fox News picks around, like, 100 people, then they take their opinions, then they use that to base their facts on who will win an election. So over 350 people, that's a lot of people that voted for Manny Machado. Yeah, and, um, and to be honest with you, Manny Machado is one of those guys that, let's just say, for an example, if we play a scenario out here, um, I've been against the whole idea of, well, let's give up a lot of prospects, get Machado now when you get him next year. But if you think about it, and I've thought about this a lot recently, let's say, for an example, the Yankees do all for five years and 100 plus million to Darvish, and they end up getting Darvish, and they have a boatload of their prospects now. It's in the Orioles' best, best interest, in my opinion, personally, to call the Yankees up and, and give the Yankees an offer. So go ahead and ask for what you want. Start a conversation. But to me, if the Yankees add a guy like Darvish, the the the, the – respectability in a sense to say the the actual idea of this happening could come close to the reality that I think most people actually think. And I've been I've been thinking about that here recently. If the Yankees aren't able to get a guy like you, Darvish, fit him into the payroll, maybe make another deal out there uh, to, to clear up some payroll, you got to think that if you're the Yankees, maybe you go at one last attempt and you throw a decent offer out there. And the thing about Yankee fans, including myself, I'm right now kind of on that boat of saying, no, I don't want to surrender a lot of guys now. But let me tell you right now, including myself, me or any of the Yankee fans, the Yankees gave up, you know, three top prospects, for an example, and maybe a couple of others get Machado a year early than they're expected to. Nobody's going to complain when he's a Yankee. So, exactly. you know, we can talk about it now and argue about it or whatever it is. But there's no way, and, 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 and as you know personally, I mean, I, I've been – not one pushing the the Machado name at all, but if Machado became a Yankee tomorrow and the Yankees gave up, let's say Frazier, Montgomery, Adams, and two lower level guys, I'm not going to sit back and say, "Oh man, we lost some prospects." I want to be like, "Hey, man, Manny Machado's a year early, playing on a team that we expect to win the World Series." So I'm cool with it. Exactly. Plus, some um, the prospects that will be traded, Manny Machado's just going to be a cash cow. I mean. The guy's literally going to make the Yankees a gazillion dollars. Well, you know what my idea is with a three-way trade with uh, the Diamondbacks. What, how do you look the Yankees obtaining a Manny Machado? What kind of deal do you think the Yankees would make for Manny Machado? Are you, are you talking about a three-team deal or, or just straight up? Yeah, my my opinion, the way you get Manny Machado is dealing with a, uh, the Diamondbacks. Uh, dump Jacoby yeah. Ellsbury to the Diamondbacks, whatever. You get Corbin from the deal. Either the Orioles get Corbin or the Yankees get Corbin. How, how do you view that deal going now? Um, if, it, if it comes to a three-way trade, it's, I, I believe I, I spoke about this recently on the video because I know it's 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 been a, a quite the topic here recently of, of people talking about it. Um, but if you if you look at it, you got to look at look at it in the sense of how is it going to help every team. So you got a three-way scenario here of the Orioles who are not going to be a contender. I don't care if, if everything goes the Orioles' way. They're not going to be a contender in that division. We all know that they, they need a rebuild. They need to trade Machado. 
Um, if Britain didn't get hurt, they would have dealt Britain too. I believe that. Maybe they'll wait to the deadline to do these things. But if, if you're talking about it right now, you know the Orioles aren't a contender. So, one, they're going to want prospects back. They're going to want to start rebuilding early. You're looking at they're giving up the top guy that would be available. The Yankees already got Stanton, who was the top guy. When it comes to trades, Machado's no question the top hitter that is somewhat available, so they say he's available. If you're looking at it that way, you go ahead and, and now you look at the Yankees. The Yankees are a win-now team. They're going to need something back that's going to make them say, okay, we're going to win even more now. And of course, that's Manny Machado. Now, if you look at the Arizona Diamondbacks, this is a team in the National League that people have underrated for. for last year, he underrated them. This team is ready to win right now. Tony Lavolo is their coach. Excellent, excellent manager. They got a great, great ball club. A really, really good team. I don't think people realize how good the Diamondbacks have a chance to be. So, on their perspective, giving up a Corbin isn't a huge deal because he's going to be a free agent anyway. So you get rid of him. What do you get back on the the Diamondback side? Can you get a Batantis? Can you get a Robertson? Can you get a Brad Brock? Um, would the Orioles go about doing all that? How much are, are the Orioles getting back? So there's a, there's a, a lot to go around. Then the more you think about it, it's going to take a lot of work, but it can happen because if you think about this too, say for an example, Yosmani Tomas has been a, a somewhat of a disaster for a team like the Diamondbacks, but he has a decent sized contract. What if Ellsbury goes that way, Tomas goes a different way, not necessarily saying the Yankees, but you kind of work out on how those budgets look and who's taking the most of the salary. So it depends on a lot of things. I like the idea of just a straight-up trade with the Orioles, to be honest with you. Yeah. Like, if I'm the Orioles, honestly, you can ask for what you want. You don't have to make a trade now. And, I, and I've argued this point. At the trade deadline, teams are not going to tell you, well, we wanted a full year of him. They're going to they're gonna, they're gonna have a lot more suitors for Machado come the deadline. Could be an idea that they, they can play around with. But if I'm them, I'd go to the Yankees flat out and, and look, I start with Glaber Torres, and I start with Andujar, and I start with Sheffield, and I start with Adams. And I just – and Cashman is easy to say, all right, well, here's the guys that are off limits. Let me give you an off – see where it goes. But there's no question in my mind, if I'm the Orioles and the Yankees offer me Montgomery, Adams, Frazier, and let's just go with um, Andujar for now. Let's just, let's just say that name. How as an Orioles fan are you upset with that deal? You can't be. Exactly. So that's that the, point, yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I'm looking at. The way the uh, Orioles want starting pitching, they're going to ask for a Montgomery and a Chance Adams. So um, that's basically, yeah, I see that kind of deal going down too. And to be honest, if the Yankees get Darvish, I'm a, I, I'm a huge Montgomery fan. I like Montgomery. I think he showed a lot in a tough division. That's fine. I, I don't – I wouldn't – that loss wouldn't suffocate me, to be honest. If I'm getting Machado now, and, and I know the Yankees are the Yankees, so they still got a good chance to re-sign this guy, go out – do it. You know, if you can do it, do it. I will be upset for a while, like a lot of Yankee fans would be. We gave up Montgomery, we gave up Adams, gave up Frazier. People would be upset. But let me tell you, man, when opening day comes around, a spring train is around, and you just added Stanton and Machado to your lineup, I mean, nobody's complaining once that first pitch is going. Exactly, and from your poll, it shows that the Yankee fans are going to be interested in Manny Machado being oh, yeah. a Yankee, so um, that's a lot of money oh, the yeah. Yankees oh, are yeah. going to make. Oh, yeah, Yan Yankee fans, Yankee fans, including myself, I mean, I've said it all along, I want Machado. I, there's no doubt in my mind I would want Machado now. It just depends on how do you get him. You know, uh, the Orioles, are the Orioles going to trade with the Yankees? And at the end of the day, it's been reported, you've reported it, um, other reporters have spoke about it somewhat, that they are the best match. The Yankees are the best match for the Orioles. Exactly. Uh, the I Orioles mean, they, they, have they, they no other are. team to do a trade like that for Manny Machado. I mean, the Yankees have everything the Orioles would want. That's, that's the thing. I mean, the Yankees have everything that any team would want right now. That's why yeah. even thinking about – you know, if you if you do break it down with with common sense, just to say, it, are you really is, would Peter Angelos really jump in front of his own organization and say, well, since I have a dislike towards the Yankees, I'm going to stall my rebuilding efforts here to get this team to be a championship caliber team when I can add four guys that are close to majorly ready? That's the other thing. As an Orioles fan, so if I take off my Yankee hat here and I'm thinking about it as an Orioles fan, if somebody tells me, all right, well. We're giving up Manny Machado, but we know we're not going to re-sign this guy. That's obvious. The Orioles are not re-signing Manny Machado, no matter what they do. But if, if, 
if Angelos makes his trade and the GM makes his trade and, and they can go to their fans and say, we got you a major league third baseman in Miguel Andahar. We got you a major league ready outfielder in Clint Frazier and two major league ready starting pitchers. Exactly. To me, the Orioles win that trade. Exactly, and it's not a guarantee, Manny Machado. Exactly, it's not, and it's not a guarantee that Manny Machado signs for uh, 2019 as a free agent. That, that's correct. And so they yeah, went yeah, automatically. Right, yeah, the, the Orioles went automatically. Correct. I mean, there's countless teams that are gonna want to sign him. You, I mean, it might come down to a battle. People aren't talking about this. What about the Red Sox? Yeah, they got Raphael Devers there, but you don't think the Red Sox gonna try to make a play after the Yankees got Stanton? Exactly. To try to block them from getting both guys. I mean, it could come to a battle. So. If I'm, I wish I was the Orioles GM tomorrow. I'll be quite honest with you. I mean, I would be on the phone with the Yankees right now asking for that package I just asked for. Exactly. And just to see where it goes. And we got to mention uh, Peter Angelos' age. He's like 89 years old. He has to let his GM do his job. Yeah, I mean, their time right now, even if you think about it, what was it, cool? was it 2012, I believe? I, I'm just guessing off the top of my head, when Abanias broke their heart a couple of nights in a row. I mean, that team was a win-now team. The Orioles were in the playoffs. They were ready to win. They didn't make the trades then. They didn't make the moves. Everybody, I remember the offseason, what are the Orioles going to do? They didn't do much at all. So, I mean, really right now, if you think about it, you want to get that jump start. Machado's your guy to get that jump start. If you get four major league caliber guys, I, I don't understand how an organization could honestly say no. Exactly. So, what do you think um, Hugh Darvish is going to line? Let's say the Yankees don't get Hugh Darvish. You think they can still – go after a Manny Machado via three-way trade and with the Diamondbacks get a Corbin yeah. or something like that? I mean, yeah, yeah. I don't I don't see why not. Um, if you – the the three-way the three way trade scenario reminds me of something that would have to have been being put together for a couple of years. I always talk about the um, the Curtis Granderson deal that when the deal struck, everybody's like, man, that came out of nowhere. But then Cashman came out and said, look, we've been working on this for two months. Yeah. So, I mean, Cashman does things like that. Like – that's the amazing thing about it. I mean, Cashman will come out with a deal that he'll say, well, we've been working on this for two and a half months since before we got Stanton. And all of a sudden, these pieces have been worked on for a while. They were just trying to work on the final the final pieces to finalize it. But, yeah, I mean, if the Yankees don't land Darvish, I mean, I expect, like like my last uh, like my last post said, you know, the, the Cubs are hard after a starting pitcher. Minnesota's a wild card. The Rangers, I still feel, are a wild card. And then you got the Dodgers, of course. But, it looks like the Dodgers are certainly a little scrap for cash. So I don't know how that works out, but he might fall in the lap of the Yankees, and that's what they're hoping for. That's how, the only reason about, the Yankees um, are in this thing. How about upping the value of the trade? How about – I know you mentioned Robbie Ray at one point. How about at, um, trading a Justice Sheffield, if that's his name? What's his name again? Is that his name? Yeah, Justice Sheffield. Yeah, yeah. Justice Sheffield, yep. Yeah, yeah. What about including him and possibly landing a Robbie Ray? No, they'll they'll never do that. I mean, Robbie Ray, you're talking about, and and it's and it's crazy too because a, a lot of people don't 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 get to see Robbie Ray often because he's in Arizona. Yeah. I mean, literally, you're talking you're talking about one of the the elite strikeout pitchers in Major League Baseball. But Probably let's say gonna, um, gonna, yeah, let's say when you were mentioning that earlier in the off season, what would it take to get a Robbie Ray? It'll take a lot. I mean, everything. Uh, honestly, everything. You're, you're talking about a Manny Machado type deal for a guy right. like Ray. He, he, a Chris Archer type deal for a guy like Ray. Exactly. They, they would never. And, and first of all, too, it, I think I think he's not movable. Again. I think Robbie Ray is not movable. No, 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 he's not. No, he's Corbin, not. He's Corbin not is definitely. Right Corbin can. Yeah, Corbin. Definitely. Corbin, no question is. And I don't. I don't know if um uh, a lot of people probably saw that post I put on there yesterday with before and after stats of Corbin, but. You know, people are quick to, to jump the gun and, and say, well, the Yankees got prospects, so we're fine in the rotation. But when you're a winning, when you're a winning team, the last thing you want to worry about it is any injury going down, then you're plugging in a guy that might not be ready. I think it makes perfect sense for the Yankees to go after a starter now. Remember, CC Sabathia isn't always healthy. Uh, Tanaka has had his, had his concerns. Severino threw 50-something more in than he's ever thrown. Montgomery's first full season – at the major league level, high high stress pitches, as David Cohn talks about a lot. It's a big difference on your arm. So for me personally, I want to add somebody. If I start Montgomery in AAA, that's a win for the Yankees. I don't see it as a negative. I see it as a win. If Corbin is a bomb, or or whoever they get maybe on a one year deal is a bomb, you replace them. You got the opportunity to do that. I like the Yankees rotation. I'm not in love with it. I, I, the Houston Astros have a far superior rotation. I'll argue with anybody on that. 
And let's not forget but about the Red Sox. They might the, the the Red Sox might b- bounce back from that um, disaster, which I will call it because they were projected to be the Golden State Warriors. Oh, yeah. I'm saying oh, they yeah. could b- bounce back too with oh, a yeah. crazy rotation. Correct. Yeah, they can they can do something. And and at the end of the day, now if you know it looks like JD Martinez could could really fall right in the laps of the Arizona Diamondbacks now if the Red Sox don't decide to give him the offer he wants. Yeah, my gut feeling t- tells me that JD Martinez will be a Diamondback. That's just a fact. I wouldn't I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt that one bit. I really wouldn't doubt it one bit. And I mean, it got the salary cap to, to definitely do it now. A lot of people were saying if they make that deal, they have to try to move Granky. I don't necessarily see that happening. Um, you know, there, there was a there was an article somewhere today. I was running by it, and they were talking about Ellsbury for Granky deal, if that's possible. But still doesn't still doesn't make much sense because why are you going to give up one of the still one of the better starting pitchers in the National League for Ellsbury? Doesn't make sense. So the Samuel every report in the, the last seconds. What do you want to add to the Yankee fans out um, there? I want to talk about one thing real quickly, and I was reading this earlier. Buster Only was on one of the – one of the uh, I forgot what, what station it was, MLB Network, the radio show, or one of those radio shows, but he, he mentioned something that kind of made a little bit of sense. I was looking into it some. He mentioned that the Yankees very well could, at the end of the day – well, well, let me just go over his predictions real quick. He said that the Yankees are going to miss out on Darvish – they're going to sign Todd Frazier to a one-year deal, and they're going to trade for a controllable starter, which he also mentioned as Chris Archer being one of those possibilities. So we'll see what that goes. But one of the things he mentioned is trading for one of the young lefties from the um, Atlanta Braves. I was looking at some of their guys. Obviously, for fans who know, the number one left-handed starting pitcher in, in, in for the prospects in, in, in the minor leagues is Colby Allard, who's their second top prospect beside, behind uh, Ronald Acuna. But there's other guys at the lower, you know, there's six, seven, eight, nine, ten prospects around there. Uh, Luis Gohara, Joey Wentz, Max Freed. These are guys that you can possibly see a prospect for prospect trade, which you don't see as often as you used to. But that's very possible. So, so keep an eye out on that. Um, it'll give the, the Braves possibly somebody who's major league ready and the Yankees get a good young arm as a lefty. Still, I don't see that making much sense because the Yankees got Sheffield themselves. So if they do make a deal and they miss out on Darvish, look, I, I still think Corbin's the guy, but it's very, very possible that they go, they still are working on a deal to get a young, controllable starter. So that has been Peter Salmonetti of the Salmonetti Report. You can catch him on Twitter at Salmonetti Source. Don't follow the fake one, Salmonetti Sauce. The real deal <laughs> is at the Salmonetti Source. A good name though, man. I was gonna I gotta I gotta make like a segment called the Simonetti Sauce. Ha ha ha. All right, man. Take it easy, man. All right, thank you.